This is Rummy's Corner. Rummy's Corner. Last Saturday from Saitama, Japan, in a middleweight championship contest that was broadcast on the still relatively new streaming app service known as The Zone, Gennady Golovkin put his IBF middleweight championship on the line against WBA super duper middleweight champion Ryota Murata. This actually wound up being a hell of a nice scrap that was essentially a tactical slugfest that saw both champions landing an awful lot of hard flush punches. Over the first four rounds, things were heated and competitive. Where Gennady tended to start the round strong, Murata was proving durable, and he was often firing back strong in the later portions of the round. At times, Golovkin was looking old and slow, and he almost gave the impression of a fighter who no longer has the gas tank to pull the trigger when he otherwise may have done so just a few short years ago. Golovkin and Murata were both displaying strong chins, and they both came to fight. Around the fifth round, Murata was becoming far more reluctant to walk into the firepower of Triple G, and this trend progressed during the ensuing rounds, where Golovkin was throwing his jab with authority, and he was landing a number of menacing left hooks and sneaky short uppercuts. It was a very Golovkin-esque performance, where he grinded down his opponent with a blend of power and technical prowess in a vintage methodical performance. Golovkin was breaking him down physically and mentally before dropping him hard in round 9, which prompted his corner to throw in the towel. So Golovkin is now the unified IBF WBA super duper middleweight champion, where he has now made two title defenses since reclaiming a title following his loss to Canelo Alvarez. And that's the focus now for Golovkin. He did his part, and now Canelo has an upcoming match against Dmitry Bivol on May 7th, which incidentally, I hope to finish a prediction video on that one sometime in the relatively near future. Assuming a Canelo victory, which is not a given, that should pave the way to a long-awaited third encounter between Canelo and Golovkin. And even if Bivol managed to score the upset, a third encounter could still be in the cards regardless. Their second encounter happened all the way back in September 2018, almost exactly a year to the day after their controversial draw in the first meeting. The rematch was a close and competitive affair, with a few very tricky rounds to score along the way. And at the conclusion of 12 hard-fought rounds, Canelo was awarded a 12-round majority decision. To this day, this is the only official loss on Golovkin's record, although unofficially, there are a good number of fans who believe that Golovkin deserved a nod in both encounters. Regardless of your opinions on that, there is little argument that Canelo performed much better in the rematch, and he even managed to improve while making a drastic shift in his approach and strategy. Since that fight, these two have been on diverging paths, albeit both successful and unblemished paths to date. Golovkin has now won four fights in a row since then. Meanwhile, Canelo has won seven in a row, with an eighth fight in the very near future. And during that stretch, Canelo has looked fantastic, where he seems to be showing steady improvement. Canelo defended the unified championship at 160, he won a major world title at 175, and then he beat three undefeated champions in a span of less than 11 months to become the first undisputed champion in the history of the super middleweight division. And he likewise became one of only six boxers to become undisputed in any weight class during the modern four belt era. Basically, Canelo seems to be just hitting the full stride of his boxing prime, whereas Golovkin appears to be winding down at the age of 40. The big question is, assuming this fight indeed happens at 168 in a battle for Canelo's undisputed super middleweight world championship, how will Golovkin handle 168? Triple G is a career middleweight, and I see a lot of fans criticize him for never moving up, and I never fully understood that criticism myself. 
I personally don't like guys moving up in weight just for the sake of moving up. And in the case of Gennady, he was always perfectly suited for middleweight. Now that's not to say it wouldn't have been awesome to see Golovkin square off against Carl the Cobra Frotch at super middle. Rumors of that one being in the cards back in the day was a captivating proposition. And it involved the same question about Gennady we have now about his ability to remain effective at 168 when he's perfectly suited for 160. Personally, at that time I favored Frotch in that matchup. Not that my opinion means a damn thing. My subpar track record of making predictions is well established. I'm not exactly Quasimodo over here. I mean Nostradamus. You know Quasimodo predicted all this. Oof, madong. Alright, take it easy. Not that I thought it would have been a give me for Frotch. And looking back now, Golovkin may have had a better chance to win than I thought at that time. After all, Gennady is a proven battle-tested warrior, but so was Frotch. At that time, my line of thinking was the Cobra was a well-established, proven elite boxer at 168. Frotch was tough, he had a little versatility, and he had a lot of heart and determination. The Cobra had a very good resume, he always came to fight, and Frotch defeated George Groves in front of 80,000 screaming fans at Wembley Stadium. The point is, even with his great abundance of talent, it was difficult to know how well Golovkin's unique blend of assets would translate 8 pounds north. Would his power carry up? Would his stamina be the same? How well would he absorb the power of a naturally bigger super middleweight? We never found out the answer to that question back then. And now that Golovkin is 40 where he appears to be in a slow, visible decline, that question becomes even more pronounced. Especially since Canelo seems to be right at the height of his powers. Logically speaking, when you consider some of the trouble that guys like Derevianchenko and Murata were able to give Golovkin at certain points in their fights, and you look at the way Canelo has torn it up at 168, logically speaking, it is difficult to find a path of hope for Golovkin getting that ever-elusive, career-defining, high-profile victory. Canelo seems to handle jumping around different weight classes effectively, so pinning any hopes on negative effects from bouncing around weight seems unlikely, although I do question how much longer he can effectively get away with doing that sort of thing. But the one saving grace that should give Gennady some hope, at least as I see it, is the fire clearly still burns. I think legacy is something that is important to Golovkin, and he proved that to me against Murata. Sure, he got tagged good a few times, and he absorbed some unpleasant leather downstairs, but he maintained focus, he stayed the course, and he saw it through in workmanlike, methodical fashion before ultimately breaking Murata down. It is difficult to imagine a winning scenario where a 40-year-old Golovkin moving up in weight to face his younger former conqueror, who has only gotten better since last they met. But you know the old saying, styles make fights, and these two styles clashed in a captivatingly competitive rivalry. I believe this might well turn out to be a situation like the Pacquiao-Marquez rivalry, where most people thought Pacquiao would steamroll him in the third encounter, that wound up being uber competitive, before another wild and competitive fourth encounter, that saw Juan Manuel Marquez finally get the victory he always believed he deserved in their previous matches. Some rivalries are just always going to produce a competitive battle, and I believe Golovkin and Canelo will prove to fit that mold, despite Triple G jumping up at 40 to face the prime face of boxing. And if Fury and Wilder showed us anything, it's that the third fight in an intense rivalry often proves to be the most heated encounter. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves, Canelo vs. Bivol is up next month. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed and have a wonderful night. This is Rummy's Corner. You know, Quasimodo predicted all this.